What's up, Crown Crew? Welcome to Crowned Athletics. Hi, I'm Kirsten, your self-proclaimed fitness princess. And in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to run a run Disney race, because I think they're pretty different than a regular race. Besides the obvious that you are running at a theme park, I think also the people who are running these races are happier and chattier, we're all wearing fun costumes. There's just a different vibe to these races than other ones, and I think that makes for a different race experience and how you should prepare to run it. Before we get started, if you want to continue to see more Run Disney type videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Disclaimer, if you can hear our complexes lawnmowers right now, I'm really, really sorry. Hopefully they'll be gone soon. So my first tip, my favorite tip, really the whole reason Crowned Athletics even exists, is that you should run in costume. It makes planning for your race so much more fun because now you get to come up with a cool idea and maybe do some crafting and you get to buy new stuff to wear for race day. We all obviously love Disney here, so now you get to dress as a Disney character besides just Halloween. The best reason for this though is during the actual race because when you wear someone recognizable, all the spectators will yell at you and encourage you as you're running, go Ariel, go Belle, and then you know that they're yelling specifically for you, which makes it so much more special than just the general cheering. And as someone who has cheered for runners before, I greatly appreciate when someone's in a costume that I can yell out their costume name because yelling go runners a million times gets very annoying. If I can yell go Tigger, go Buzz, it's so much more fun for me as well. Okay, this next one I am very adamant on, but I know a lot of people have different opinions. Don't wear headphones to a Run Disney race. I know the official Run Disney website says not to wear them so that you can hear like safety announcements and things like that. I don't wear them because you get to hear so much more of what's going on around you and you feel a lot more immersed in the race. That's a lot of sombreros, I'm just saying. This is most obvious when you're in the theme parks. They play really fun music that usually is really inspiring and pumps you up and you're like, oh my god, I can do this. A good song. It's hard to not want to run too fast when you're in the parks because of this inspirational music, but you definitely, definitely want to be a part of that. But also when you're on the highway and you think that, okay, this is going to be the really boring part, I'll put in my headphones. You can hear if you want, but I actually really like still being a part of the race experience. I run alone, so I have no one to talk to, and I kind of like eavesdropping on people's conversations as they're running by me. People can tend to say really funny things when they're super tired and you're at like mile 10 or something, which kind of goes into my next tip, talk to strangers, make new friends. As an introvert and someone who's not really big on small talk, I end up actually talking to a ton of people on race weekends because there really isn't any small talk because you're talking about something that you're in in the moment that's pretty interesting. If someone's running by and they're having a conversation and they say something funny, I might like chuckle along and try and insert myself into their convo. I don't know if that's rude of me, but <laughs> it gives me something to do. They seem to like to have a new person to chat with as well and then we can kind of just laugh about the situation that we're in about whatever mileage it is or we saw a funny sign or something like that and now I kind of have a new friend. If you're scared to do this just think about it there's thousands of people out there you may never see them again but if you keep coming back to run Disney races you might actually see them again and now you have a new friend and they're not just a weird stranger. I don't know it's what I like to do. The morning of my first marathon I was freaking out I was so scared and I was alone because my friends are way faster and they were in a corral much ahead of mine. I actually asked the woman next to me if she would give me a hug. <laughs> I just really needed to like calm down and feel someone hug me <laughs> and she was so kind. She was very excited to hear it was my first one and give me a big hug and wish me luck. Also spectators are really fun to chat with. There's this group that I've seen twice now. They bring loud music and they have like jello shots and I think like bacon or something and they're this super fun group of ladies and if you just stop and chat with them as you're you know having one of their jello shots why not <laughs> then you can make a new friend and they're obviously there to chat with you guys too so they love it. I also met at my 23. She was my lifesaver. In my first marathon, I had a foot brace on because I had a foot injury. And so I was taking it off because it had gotten too tight and I was going to finish the race without it. And she came up to me because she saw I was sitting down and she was this nice little old lady. I think she had done like a hundred marathons. She was amazing. And then we walked for a couple miles together and then she pushed me on my way to finish my race. It was the best and I will never forget her clearly. My next tip is to please take your time in the beginning. I think with other races, if you're kind of just running a 
along the road and there aren't these big magical experiences that you're trying to get to like a theme park it's easier to stick to your pace but I know when you start those races that you're like four or five miles on the highway to begin with and all you want to do is get to Magic Kingdom to see characters to take pictures to run through the castle it's so easy to just charge ahead but please take your time and stick to your pace that you've practiced all through your training runs on these highway stretches is really where I just buckle down and I think okay this is what I trained for. I'm going to stick to my intervals. The time goes by a lot faster, I find, when I do intervals because I kind of have something to look forward to, whether it's to start running or to stop again. I mean, I can do anything for a minute and then I get to rest again. So please take your time and stick to the training that you've done up until this point. So Disney does provide different fuel throughout your races if you're doing a half marathon or a full marathon, but if you're not used to taking that specific kind of fuel and you don't know how your tummy is gonna react to it, I definitely bring my own. And then I like to bring something a little bit extra special for like kind of mile 10 or maybe mile 22 if it's the full marathon that I know I can look forward to. So for me, maybe I'm a little bit weird. I know people do bring salt packets to replenish their salt because you're sweating it all out, but I really love olives. <laughs> they make these little tiny olive packs that are like a to-go olive pack and then I just save that until mile 22 and I know that I can have it and it's just something I can look forward to and then I feel so amazing after I have it. So maybe think of something that you would like to look forward to that you can bring with you. I also wanted to mention the water stops. Run Disney has the best water stops that I have ever experienced in a race. They have the tables on both sides of the road, which is amazing because usually it's just on one side and then everyone's fighting to get to that side. So whatever side you're on, just stay there. They offer Powerade in the beginning, the first couple tables, and then the last couple are just plain water. And I like to alternate between the two. So this is great because then I don't have to bring my own water with me. I like to be as hands-free as possible. You're welcome to if you want to, but they take care of you out there. Medical tents also have water every so often if you need some in between the water stops, but the water stops are basically every mile, so you're going to be good to go. This is one of my other very, very favorite tips. It helps everything go by so much more positively and exciting. I love to cheer kind of back at the spectators and for everyone that I'm running with. I am just a woo machine through an entire race. I love to woo. When you woo, they woo, then another person woos, and then you just have this huge woo fest and everyone is so happy and cheering. It's both good for you, for the runners, for the spectators, because the spectators get kind of bored. I mean, they're just there like they have to keep cheering and everything, but if they kind of see you give something back to them, it makes them feel like they're doing their job and they're helping you. And so I think it's really nice. <laughs> and I don't know how you could be tired and miserable when you're wooing. So it really helps uplift me because I'm putting positivity into the air. I mean, when you force yourself to smile, doesn't it kind to make you happier and then even if you're just on a highway stretch and there's no spectators I'll just throw in a good woo and then people will respond now we're all a little bit happier so next time you're feeling really really tired and you just want it to be over just try it give a nice big woo maybe two woos maybe a big hands up as you woo so there's some visual and I promise you're gonna feel a lot better when you do it okay now specifically for the marathon I have a couple tips ride Everest if you're new to this channel and you haven't watched my other Walt Disney World marathon videos I love riding Everest in the middle of my marathon I think it's the absolute best thing you can do. I think it's the best thing about this marathon, any marathon. It's why this is the best marathon. I'm in line to ride Everest. You need to do this race. You get to ride roller coaster you should ride again. It's at exactly mile 13. You're starting to get a little bit tired so you could use a nice pick-me-up. The train is full of runners. It's all runners and everyone's just cheering non-stop. So you'll never run a marathon like this again, but you'll also never ride Everest like this again because no one ever cheers like that crazy on Everest unless you're doing it in the middle of the marathon. <laughs> then my next one for the full marathon, I don't know if he's still there. I hope he is, but the past two marathons that I did, there's this guy at mile 17 where you go over an overpass on the highway and he has a rolling stick with him. I think he had like three of them and then you can go and like roll out your hamstrings and your quads. <sighs> Lifesaver. Sir, you 
are my lifesaver. <laughs> and I'm clearly never going to forget him, ever. I hope he keeps going every year. Or if you're gonna be spectating and you're gonna be at one of those mile markers, bring your rolling stick for someone to use. So look out for him or anyone with a rolling stick and ask to use it. So when you're finishing the marathon, you go through Epcot, you're on your last mile. And I know all you wanna do is finish, but this is the time where you need to really relish in it. I mean, this is it. Like you've done it, you're gonna finish. This is incredible. I know you just want it to be over with, but please take your time, enjoy. There's characters all throughout Epcot on your way to the finish line and they have no lines. There's tons of characters and you should really take this opportunity to get those pictures rather than the ones in the beginning where you had to wait behind like 50 people. This is the time to get those character photos. And also grab a drink, get a pretzel get some nachos. Where else are you going to be able to do this? You could grab a beer. That's great for carbs, maybe a glass of champagne. And then they have tons of photographers. So then you're like walking with your champagne for the photo pass photographers. I think that's kind of funny. So just enjoy. This is your moment. And now you're a marathoner. So those are all my tips for how to run specifically a run Disney race. They are the best kinds of races. Obviously I've done a ton of them. <laughs> if you take anything from this video, run in costume and then go to crown athletics.com to get said costume. Always coming out with different characters that you can run as. We've got athletic tank tops and sweat wicking headbands. Perfect so that you have a cute but very comfortable race day costume. If you like this video, please give a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I am so very grateful. Make sure you subscribe and always wear your crown with pride. Bye!